Hi, my name's Gail McLaughlin and I'm currently a student at BCIT studying perinatal nursing. The following video presentation will use the situated clinical decision making framework to assist a mother with mastitis feed her baby with Down syndrome. As always with breastfeeding, the three rules apply. Feed the infant, move the milk, help the dyad learn to breastfeed. I hope you enjoy the presentation. The situated clinical decision-making framework used to assist a breastfeeding mother with mastitis effectively nurse an infant with Down syndrome. The situated clinical decision-making framework is a tool healthcare professionals use to assist in making decisions based on more than a basic understanding of nursing, the patient's reported needs and documented care plans. This is what the framework looks like. In the centre is knowledge and this comprises of four characteristics. Knowing the self, knowing the case, knowing the client and knowing the person. Then we continue to cues. Observations, statements from others, laboratory and assessment data, and intuition. After cues is judgment. What could be happening? What data or evidence supports this? Do I need more information and from whom? Who should I involve or consult? And what priority does this have? After judgment comes decisions. How can we help mothers feed their infants effectively? Should I involve or consult someone else? How will I know if I made the right decision? And lastly, but most importantly, is evaluation of outcomes. Did the decisions achieve what I wanted to happen? Should I make another decision? Should I collect more information? Who should I involve or consult? And did I support the mother's ability to evaluate? Knowing the self. This relates to my own strengths and weaknesses, my limitations and my learning and other needs of both mastitis and Down syndrome. Knowing the case. The pathophysiology of mastitis and Down syndrome, patterns that exist in typical cases and predicted trajectory and client responses. Knowing the client, the baseline data, expected norms in terms of behaviours and infant output. Knowing the person, past experience in relation to health and illness. Has this mum had mastitis before? Has she had an issue with breastfeeding an infant previously? and patterns in relation to personal response to pathology and treatment. Cues. Observations. Observe the mother, the baby, and the feeding relationship. Statements from clients and others. Does the mother know that it's recommended that she continue to breastfeed while she has mastitis, even if she has antibiotics? Laboratory and assessment of data. Does she have signs and symptoms of an infection? Does she have a fever? Does she have a warm, painful breast? Intuition. What is your gut feeling? Judgment. What could be happening? What data evidence supports this? Do I need more information and from whom? 
should I involve or consult another health professional and should that be a lactation consultant, a midwife or physician or a breastfeeding clinic and what priority does this have? Decisions. How can we help the client? Should I involve or consult someone else? How will I know I made the right decision? Evaluation of outcomes. Did the decision achieve what I wanted to happen? Should I make another decision? Should I collect more information? Who should I involve or consult? Support client's ability to evaluate. Mastitis and Down syndrome. Mastitis is inflammation of the breast, usually caused by infection and is most common during the first six months of breastfeeding. It usually starts as a painful area in one breast and may be red and warm to touch. You may also have a fever, chills and flu-like symptoms. It most often happens when bacteria enters the breast through the nipple. Infants born with Down syndrome may have a protruding tongue that can push against the nipple. This may pose a challenge for latching on as the nipple may be forced out of the mouth and ma making nursing more difficult. They often have low muscle tone, including reduced muscle strength in their tongue and lips. Going for long stretches between breastfeeds or not emptying the breast completely may also contribute to mastitis. You are more likely to get mastitis if you have had mastitis before, have an emia, have cracked or irritated nipples, or you delay or skip breastfeeding or pumping sessions. Many babies born with Down syndrome are very sleepy in the first few weeks after birth and may have to be woken up for a feed, or they may even fall asleep at the breast. It may mean the infant misses out on the important hind milk, which is higher in fat and calories and important for growth. Mothers with mastitis may have red painful breast, cracked nipples, a fever, breast fullness, ineffective lactogenesis and a gut feeling that something is wrong. Infants with Down syndrome may fail to gain weight, have an inability to latch, have an insufficient output of wet and dirty diapers, have dry skin turgor, have ineffective and infrequent feeding. Observations of the feeding relationship. Is there effective, sufficient milk transfer? Does the dyad look comfortable and comforted with milk transfer? The infant's difficulty latching and fatigue during feeds could mean the breast isn't emptying completely and this milk stasis is resulting in mastitis. Would the infant nurse better in a different position, taking into account poor muscle tone and enlarged tongue? Perhaps the mother would benefit from support from a lactation consultant, the breastfeeding clinic or the Canadian Down Syndrome Society. How can we help mothers with mastitis feed their infants effectively? Get plenty of rest and drink more fluids. Before breastfeeding, place a warm, wet face cloth over the affected breast for approximately 15 minutes. Massaging the affected breast may also increase milk flow. And if symptoms persist, a visit to the doctor for antibiotics may be required. How can we help infants with Down syndrome nurse effectively? Change position. The dancer hand position is particularly useful for infants with low muscle tone. Keep the infant awake during feeds. Dim the room so the baby doesn't have to close eyes against the light. Remove clothes before nursing to keep the infant cool and aware. Stimulate senses by lightly touching or stroking. Place a cool, damp washcloth on the infant's belly, leg or forehead. The cool sensation will keep them awake. Evaluation of outcome. Does the mother still have mastitis? Is the infant able to nurse more effectively? Is the infant gaining weight appropriately? 
If the answer to any of these questions is no, then what would be the most appropriate next step? Revisit previous decisions. Is further teaching required? Is referral to another healthcare professional appropriate?